<laughs> we are all vibed up today. All of us vibed up. And I am really excited to introduce our guest today. And I'm going to read her bio because I want you to know how fabulous she is. So our guest today is Elena Feldman. And Elena's journey is to raise your heart, body, and soul vibes to the next level so you can transform your life today. She has embraced her fitness and life coaching abilities to be successful working with those of diverse ages and backgrounds, both individually and in a group setting. Now listen to this, because this is, this is really. For the past number of years, Elena has been motivating and teaching seniors, cancer patients, and children to be the very best they can, to be the very best they can be, hello, look, 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 <laughs> and to live life to the fullest. Get to know Elena by bringing your vibes. Now, I want to say that when I very first met her, I thought, look at her, she's 12. How is she, <laughs> how is she coaching seniors, you know? And then when you have a conversation with her, you realize that age is not about a number. It's about a vibration. So mm -hmm. Once you listen to this whole conversation that we're going to have today, you'll see how she is raising the vibrational energy of, I think, everyone she comes into contact with. So, Elena, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I just feel so blessed to be a part of this with amazing women and to show up to start my day like this. I couldn't, like my heart is just so happy and full. So thank you for having me here. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that um, I, I think, and I know you and I have had conversations about this, but I'd like you to share. Okay. So I see you as this, you know, vibrational do you guys all remember the cartoon Daffy Duck where Daffy used to go, hoo, 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 you know, and he'd be jumping all around. Well, you know, that's, that's, a, you know, I see you like that a lot, Elena. And um, in a good way, of course, in a very a He has the blonde hair, right? That hair. That yeah. Hair. <laughs> yeah. And um, because you're so happy and you bring it, you know, and so what would, do you think guide, lead, encourage, a woman of your vibrational energy to work with seniors and cancer patients? Well, hmm, that's a good question. So as I said, you know, I'm all about vibes and energy. It's not about age. It's how you show up. It's not changing who you are because I think so many times it's like new year, new me, new. And it's like, we don't need to recreate ourselves. You are an amazing person as it is. It's what energy, what vibe and how we want to show up. And we have a choice to how we show up. So my mom has always taught, Elena, you have a choice how you want to choose to show up. And you know what? No matter what, show up authentically. And that's why I love this podcast, showing up authentically. And that's my biggest thing with people is showing up of who you are online and offline. If you're having a good day, if you're having a bad day, let's be honest about it because then you can help others. Then that vibe, you can show up and being honest or, you know, in relationships, so many times we think we have to give 50, 50, you know, each way. What I like to tell someone or in relationships or working with people, Hey, I'm at a 20% today. I want to be here and show up, but this is all I can give. What do you have? And learning that vibe with someone and how we show up, because we can't expect everybody, you know, they're like, Elena, you're always happy. You're always blah, 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 blah. And it's like, no, like I have my bad days. You know, the other day I woke up not feeling like, like I think I like woke up on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> There's really no right or wrong, but you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and acknowledge that, you know what? I just felt like I wanted to sit. I wanted to just sit there. I didn't have a plan. I wasn't rushing because I feel so many times we have to, oh my gosh, I have this free time and I have to do it and I can't concentrate on myself. What vibe I wanted to give, how did I truly authentically want to show up without apologizing? Mm -hmm. So really my big thing too of that is we're always apologizing for something. I think it's maybe how we are raised or society or this and apologizing for what? I think learning to don't apologize for what's out of your control. 
And I think that's taken me a long time to understand that also being the giver, the person who you want to help this, you know, they're going to be this or that and truly showing up, but authentically saying, this is where I'm at. This is what I can give and, you know, take it or leave it. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, Elena, I, what you say reminded me is a couple of weeks ago, it was on a Saturday, I believe. I woke up and came across this picture of my brother and I, and I was immediately socked, like, like right in the stomach, like, uh, you know, with this grief and this overwhelming sadness of missing him so much, because even though my brother is still alive, he's in a nursing home with severe traumatic brain injury and has no idea who we are. So I, I was missing him so much and I was sitting at my desk and I was working on something and I thought, I can't even concentrate. What's going on here? Why is this showing up for me? And rather than, you know, try to resist it and muscle on, which is, I think what a lot of us do, I said, I I'm just going to give into this. And I'm just mm -hmm. letting you know, it was like a, okay, I'm finally going to go get the box of Kleenex and sit here and Kleenex after Kleenex and just crying. And then I even posted something on social media about sometimes, you know, you just get socked with this and you really owe it to yourself to show up unapologetically and feel whatever it is you're feeling. Yeah, and I, I love that you are, you, I think from what I can tell, you're doing this with the seniors and cancer patients that you work with because depending on their their belief system they might believe you know oh i'm this age now so life is over or oh this is happening to me now so why even you know be happy about anything and that's where i just see you like this vivacious you know like bouncing around coming in and adding so much joy to their life that's how i see you Thank you for that. I really, yeah, I really, I see people for who they are. I think that's what we need to show up as more because it's society they're putting, you know, from this and breaking ancestral patterns of showing like that doesn't define you. Like I'm my mom, I'm not my dad, but what's helped me a lot is understanding that's all they knew and having more compassion and empathy. I've always had that compassion and empathy, but as an adult now, it's like, why is my mom doing that to me? No, dad would, my mom would do that to this person and that person and that person. But as a child, you think like, my mom's being mean to me, only me. And it's, no, it's realizing those patterns that aren't yours, realizing what behaviors, how you can show up and stop those patterns. So that's another thing that's really helped me with my path is being graceful and understanding where that's all they knew and that's all they knew, but we don't know that as a child. So coming into more things of understanding. Yeah. And going back to the question that I had asked, what, what prompted you or how did you know that this was your calling to work with seniors and uh, cancer patients? How did you know this? That's a great question. So as I said, I think I've always known this. Ever since I've been a little girl, I felt different. I felt that my purpose was here to serve others, to show love, to show up in a different way because A, I was blessed with that. And B, I just, as I said, I just felt not like an alien, but I, I always felt this different. I couldn't even explain it. So when people ask me questions like, how do you know? It just intuitively comes up. So that's why I also say I'm like, your intuitive guide. Things just come up which feel right or resonate or people be like, I just told you my life story. I've never told anybody. I mean, people off the streets will tell me their deepest, darkest secrets because I'm not here to judge. I'm here to be a voice and a mirror to them to show who they truly are. So with all these and my gifts, I think it's just accepting them as you're older and not thinking like, oh, I'm the weird girl or who's the woo, woo you know, and accepting it. And that's where I find my woo woo women and my tribe and the people who I can relate to. And if I can help one person, one person is better than no one at all. Yeah. No, I love that because you're exactly point on, in my opinion, of being unapologetic is going with your intuition. Because if you, you know, you can't decide to go with your intuition and then not go either you you're in that camp or you're not yeah. in that camp. And yeah. so if you're in the camp of going with your intuition, you're not apologizing for it because you really don't know what's coming next. Exactly. And that's why I say sort of like, how do you know? I just know. Like you can either take it, you know, my grandma's cute. She always says she's an idea. 
you can give someone advice, you know, even in relationships, you said, you know, with your fiance, you know, you could suggest and say, this is my suggestion opposed to saying, do it like this or that. And so it's helpful. I think so many times we have these ideas and then we tell, but it's maybe say, if it were me, this is how I would do it. Or, or like a suggestion opposed to saying like this, you know, or you take it for what it is, you know, I just know. <laughs> Imagine how many wow. children would be so grateful to have a parent who would say, this is a suggestion without that emotional, uh, mm, I, I, I would say, I was going to say baggage and I don't think that's the word I want, that emotional pull that, yeah, mm -hmm. you say that's what you suggest, but I feel like if I don't do it, you're going to judge me or I'm going to get in trouble for it or something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's that ancest ancestral um, healing that you're talking about. You know, when each of us changes something, we change not only ourselves but generations to come and generations previous. I definitely agree with that and, and had that experience of, you know, just wanting a change, you know, exactly. Of, you know, and I think too, so many times we're trying to follow the rules or what's right or wrong or what our parents want. But learning that too, also like, um, I don't know if you ladies know about human design. Also with human design, I'm a generator or one generator. So I have that energy, I know, you know, showing up. And it's helped me out so much to tell my parents, like, this is how I need to be taught. Like when you're talking to me, I need to say A or B, my gut needs to feel it. And, you know, so learning how to communicate, I think it, it says so much too, also in families, because I tell my parents, you can't talk to me the way that you talk to my sister. We all have to realize that you have to cater towards what will show up. You know, what you say to one child or one friend is going to be different than the next. And you have to show how to, I think the biggest thing is communicating what is the best way to do that. Yeah. And it's really antiquated teaching of, oh, you're the youngest child. So this is how you are. You're the oldest. So you're, this, you're the middle child. So you are forgotten. Those kinds of things. Because when we teach that, we believe that. And when we believe that we keep reiterating it. And instead of seeing each person individually, mm -hmm. I, I was listening to something. Um, I don't recall what I was listening to, but it was, as there was a, there's a tribe in, I think it's Africa where they don't say, how are you? When they greet people, they say, I see you. And because <gasps> they recognize each person. Yeah. Huh. They say, they say that, you know, like even an animal, they might be walking in the jungle and they come upon, you know, what might be a, an animal that could tear them apart. And they stop and they have reverence and they say, I see you. And so we're recognizing the spirit, the soul, the essence of, of each entity. And they walk among these animals unhurt because they live cohesively. And I think that's such a beautiful thing. And I sometimes think like, oh man, I think I would like to start that, right? I see you. But really, I, I believe that's what namaste means as well. It is. I see the I God see in you. The divine is a, yeah, yeah, I see the divineness in you. Yeah. yeah. But when see, we say namaste instead of hello to someone, they right away think that we're some, you know, I don't know, hemp eating <laughs> crazy person or something, you know? And it's like, yeah, just acknowledge. Right. You know, I was just going to say that I think the biggest thing is being acknowledged. And I love that you brought that up because I say that that's what I put on my pages. When I say it, I say, I see you, I honor you. I love you. That's what I always tell the people around me. And do, because we want to be seen, we just want to be acknowledged and yeah. show up. And I, I agree with that. Cause when we ask someone, how are you? It's very surface. I like to say what too, how's your soul doing? You know, how are you truly deep down? Cause we can all be like, how are you? Oh, I'm good. Thanks. You guys. I know. And then, you know, and like that, that triggers me. So when someone's like, I'm fine. It's like, okay, if you, I'm here to have that safe spot to share that. And if you don't want, but I know you're really not fine. So, okay. You know, just move on. But I think being honest and just saying where we're true, like, how is your soul doing? I've started that a little bit more some friends are like, Oh, they have to really dig deep of yeah. truly connecting and being acknowledged. Yeah. Sherry, with all you, I know you have a grandchild um, coming soon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. And Thanks. what are your thoughts with having this knowledge 
now, and I'll just go back to, um, cause Elena, you probably don't know this, but Sherry was, um, for years and years, a birth doula. So, um, Sherry, how do you share this knowledge with the knowledge that you have? And, um, it's like Maya Angelou said, do what you know until you know better. And when you know better, do better. So I'm sure when you very first started as a birth doula, you knew a certain way. And now over the years, you know, you, even though that's not the primary work you do anymore, you still know the importance of bringing a soul, a life into this world. How do you share your knowledge and expertise about this now, especially like when you have a child coming into the world? That's a big question. <laughs> that's another thing I was going to talk about. That's a big question. Um, <laughs> you know, I think it's all about being really present and and seeing people as they are and to be able to feel them. You know, it's like to feel the vibration. And I think that the, I really resonated. I just want to go back to what you said right from the beginning about we're not an age, we're a vibration because... Uh, I mean, I was having one of those moments earlier today. I was feeling, you know, I was feeling a low vibration. It was kind of making me feel like I can get into that older, not feeling like I want to move kind of a thing because I've got some, I've got a physical thing going on with my shoulder and, and simply it was, you know, it's Monday and I have all these things that are on my, that are spinning around, right? We have these moments where there's so, we've put so many things on our plate. It's like, and so I, I, you know, what helped me was to simply acknowledge that you got a lot going on and the fact that you're feeling a little overwhelmed, it is, it's simply where you are right now and that's okay. And so when we came on and we started talking, I was like, immediately, it's like my vibe went way up and it was like, yeah. oh, you know, I can, I can simply be, it's okay. I can, I can move up from there. So I think it is so much about vibration and I know you know, if I can tie anything into what your question was, Nancy, about being a doula, is that the the role of a doula is to create a very safe and loving, protective environment for that mother going through labor. And um, it's so much about surrender. You know, I always tell women, I don't tell them this in the middle of labor because they might want to hurt me. But because they're feeling everything is physical, but I tell them in preparation before they've gone into labor, that as physical as labor is, it's really more of a mental thing in terms of how you prepare your body and spirit to go through this experience. Um, it's more about surrendering. And I, I'm, we'll have this conversation with my daughter at some point, you know, when we talk about what my role will be. And so in that mind of me understanding that that's so much of it, it is very much of me matching their vibration not judgmentally at all and you know looking for ways to protect and lift that space up because that's one of the most vulnerable experiences a woman will ever go through maybe the most most one of the most for sure um, of letting this birth experience go through them literally right exactly so, yeah, I think it's so much about being present. And I think the more we can tune in and understand our own vibration and to recognize when we are feeling a certain way to honor that, the more that's the more tuned in we are, the more tuned in we can be to to change, to go up, to to change, to make space for someone else that maybe is coming in with a low vibration, right? Because all of your high energy excitement, you know, Elena, I mean, you have to match that. If somebody's coming in and they're really worried about something, you can't come into that. Well, let's just, you no. know, as you said, no, right. You have, you have to be respectful yeah. and kind mm -hmm. of match them where they are. 100%. So we don't want to, we don't want to lower ourselves to be no. depressed and in a funk. We don't want, we want to stay somewhere in that place so we can help people, right. You know, rise up. Yeah. I think so. Donna, I'm sure you got lots to say about this. I'm blown away by this conversation. First of all, I mean, how do you know all that at your age? Maybe I know, she's 18. only 12. <laughs> she, yeah, maybe she's 22. How old? Well, it doesn't all he knows, how do so you I'm, know? I'm proud of my, I'm going to be 43 in October in a couple months. October 11th, 1981. I'm an 80s baby and I will be 43. Oh my gosh, you, you I, I couldn't think you're more than... 
you know, like 20s, early 30s, because you, um, you said, you've been saying a lot of things that have been, oh my gosh. The first thing you said, well, you say, well, I'm about 20% today. Mm -hmm. So how can I help you? Because I overgive. Mm -hmm. I get, and I have so much energy. So then when I finally depleted, I don't know what to say and I don't want to. So um, that's, oh my God, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have about 20% to give because everyone expects me to give. Oh, you know, no, no, no. oh I mean, now, right now I got 20%. Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. But the other thing is, is I've been, you know, I've, I spent a lot of time, I'm a lot older than you. But I spent a lot of time contemplating all of this, and I talk about the law blooming a lot. And one because we're everything is blooming, anything organic is blooming. We are blooming, and I've tr trademarked the name. I've written the book. I'm rewriting it now. But the point is, is that when we connect with people, to provoke their blooming, mm. to come Ooh. out with the sun, yeah. be like the sun. Ah, hi, how you know? Maybe now, how are you? Well, tell me what's going on with your soul. That's much better. Yes. And, how, and how is your soul is much better. I see you is much better than namaste. I'm going to adopt some of those things, okay? Because um, people need to be seen and heard. Cool. <laughs> people need that. People, we, we got kids, they're, they're sitting together and they're all like this all the time, you know? People are not connecting. They don't know what a hug is. They don't know what it's like to look into someone's eyes and love them. Mm -hmm. and they don't know what it look, feels like to have someone look at them and love them let mm -hmm. it so that's one thing that i were i'm really about cultivating that in the world because that's the fuel that creates things when we manifest happy people or strong people when we manifest we create our vision it's the love we're pouring out of us that creates the vision now we don't have to you know, dance with everybody because some people want to stomp on your toes. You're not oh, going to be well. everybody. Yeah, I love you. Bye. Yeah. But so you're being, I mean, the fact that you know all this at your age, I, I'm like, I'm grateful. I'm grateful, really. Thank you. And that you're sharing that with people. Thank you for sharing. This is what we do now because this is the important thing. I love all those hearts coming out, whatever I know. they are. I feel <laughs> I'm a hugger too. Like, I love that you said that. And nowadays you have to ask for hugs. And, it, it, you know, to me, I know people, certain people, it, everybody has their stuff, but growing up, my mom said, I used to always go and she to hug everybody. And nowadays I have to ask, like, can I give you a hug and, and whatnot? But we need that too. The human touch sometimes is just somebody, oh hands, like, it's okay. That, that vibration of what we're engaging in. My spiritual teacher said, he said two things. It's a lot of things, but one of them things he says, become the loving and don't get stuck on particulars. Boy, I lived into that one. That's Osho, you know? And he said another thing, he said, regular talk therapy doesn't really work because the hugs aren't there. It was just, a we, everyone was just hugging all the time. And, you know, without that touch and that connection, it's, and uh, people seem to be afraid of it or something. I don't know, but anyway, what your work is spectacular and um we don't have to be perfect we just aim for wonderful yes you know and that's <laughs> it period yeah. aim for wonderful stop trying to be perfect because when then we withhold and we try to peel off parts of ourselves to be perfect. and that's not fun if everybody was perfect that would you know everybody has their quirks in there you know that's how you find your tribe and you know of everything and the people having the most fun win yes they're always <laughs> winning so yeah. um, um, I this is amazing. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for oh, what you're doing and who you are, what you're bringing to the world. We need lots of this. We need lots of this through the world. Thank Elena, you. could you give us an example of something you would suggest to someone who is looking for a way to raise their vibration? Maybe their thoughts are, you know, a little down. And what would you what would you suggest? You know what I always suggest? Music is always so beautiful. I love dancing. I will dance anywhere, everywhere. I don't care how it is. People think I'm like drunk when I do it anyway, because I'll just do it. I recommend putting on your favorite song when you get up in the morning. And, you know, maybe um, I joke, I dare you to put on your favorite song, you know, for a week, challenge yourself and put on your favorite song and just dance like nobody's watching. Or 
I hate to say it. Sometimes I love to just dance naked. Get out there, put that, <laughs> that energy and just go for it. You know, shake what your mama gave you. Feel that vibe. What you want to show up, how you want to start your day is your choice. What type of music? So I love to do that. I love to put on my music. I love to dance. Maybe my great uncle, Herb Alpert. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I have him on my playlist. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Yeah. I'm mean, giving him a plug. Because I bring it. <laughs> I, gosh, I grew up with him and this, his music, it, it just has that way of moving your soul. And then your body says, oh, well, we better follow, you know, and it just, sometimes I think too, we can forget about that music that is so soul enriching. Right. And, and, and I it love that back. suggestion. Yeah. And back to the, even the childhood memories, like what was like, I remember dancing to Stevie Wonder with my dad and him and my sister on each of their sides, like listening, you know, when that comes up, that gives that core memory of like, aha, like, yes, that song or, you know, what it is, I think. There's so much that you can do. It's just what feels good to your body and showing up that way. And it, it doesn't have to be long. It, yeah. One minute, you know, people think yeah. it's one little thing can change your life. You know, something that really can just put me right there is the chicken dance. And, you know, when I hear the chicken dance and I start, you know, going, moving to it, <laughs> it reminds me of every Italian wedding I've ever attended and how much fun we were having. And you get you get lost in the feeling of the fun and that's what's really amazing do you know what can i add something to this yeah yes. yes so take your goal statements and write new lyrics to the songs you know i'm on ba -ba -da -ba -ba. you know i've got one that we wrote with a friend i got the midas touch very much everything i touch turns into gold Sometimes I like cause I'm making a buck. And, it, and so I'm basically I'm going to write my own lyrics. Oh, I wrote the lyrics, but I'm going to write new lyrics with my goal statements. But if you have your happy song in your writing or slogans that you hear all the time, I was talking about this with a friend of mine the other day. And I said, what about jingles? Yeah. You write your own goal statements into your jingles and then they go through your head all the time. <laughs> anyway, just an idea. That's uh, a great empowering because 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 our hearts are more powerful than our minds our mind the they goes about three feet our hearts go they can measure it out 16 feet they, that's only because they can't measure further but our hearts are not just pumps they're these electrical things that are happening anyway yeah if we lead more from our heart than our head then you know but we're so taught to be in our head and that monkey brain but leading from that heart and that's why i love all you women I mean, you just show up with that heart we're all you know showing up this I feel very blessed to be on here because strong, beautiful women is what we need. And, you know, not even knowing each other to show up this way and support, that is what I see as special. You know, so many times we're not taught that, but to come on, not knowing people to support and say how I can show up for you, I think is so beautiful and feel so blessed to have this. So thank you for and acknowledging that this beautiful yeah. podcast. And, you know, many people don't realize that the heart, they think the brain, the mind, the brain is like the most intelligent part of us, but it's actually the heart energy. The heart knows things. And I had read this um, um, something, I, I don't know what you call it, but read that um, there was um, a person who was murdered and she, because she died, she donated her heart and the heart recipient was able to interpret through the heart who the murderer was and the police caught the murderer. I, oh, I, me too. I mean, I've heard, I, I know this story and I'm still having chills and I'm like, there is so much. I, I feel oh. like there's so much going on in the universe that we are so clueless about. And when you really think about that story and you realize like it's the heart energy, this is where your intuition comes from. This is where your everything about you is coming from. And so if you have a really low vibrational energy, you're constricting your, your heart. Like the Grinch was three sizes too small. You know, you want to just get it out there and like, okay, how can I be even bigger? The heart energy is surrounded in all um, directions, about 15 feet, by a toroidal field. And it's the same toroidal field that encircles the universe. So 
it's a no brainer to yeah. match the fields and be where you want to be. It's life is fantastic if you allow it. I should have, I should have had a V8. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is, you know, um, Elena, what, do you do a lot of dancing when you're working with seniors and uh, cancer patients? Yes, I do. So in my, I also do like a bounce stability class. I do chair yoga. And so when they go to the other side, I say, you have to dance to the other side. I will call them out. If people do not dance to the other side, you will do a dancer until you do one. You cannot go to the side. So I make it fun. I make it joyful in my classes. It's not working out. It's not this. It's exactly like intuitive because everybody needs something different. Yeah. And also it's not to look as like workout or, you know, Walking around your room, I say, you know, if you can't get outside or you park farther going to a grocery store and not take the first spot up, even though it's princess parking, which I love, but you know, Hey, I got to get in a few more steps. I'm going to park at the end of the parking lot and walk myself around that. Or, you know, little things like that of making it fun because I want people to enjoy and wake up and do something that they enjoy. Not God, I got to work out. I got to be a filet. I don't want that to write the story. It's how do you want to show up? what feels good for you today. And if you're not feeling this, then we can work around it and what works for you. Yeah, it's not you're about saying, forcing anything. Yeah. Yeah, you're saying something really important with the emergence of AI. Because mm -hmm. AI doesn't have a heart. It can't love you. No. It's like going from a typewriter to a computer. Okay, this <laughs> is going to take us to another level there. But so, you know, people go, oh my gosh, I've got to be up to speed with AI. I got to be, no, you got to just love. You got to learn to love. That's going to be the power, your power source and your, you know, I, I train in my business. I train when you go out with people, go out, be interested, be helpful, have fun. Be interested, be helpful, have fun, connect with people, love them, open the door. How oh, can I help you? It makes you feel good. It empowers you and it connects us. Right. And it's asking people like how their day is. Like people do, and I and like people are too like you. I said I care. Like I'm not gonna sit there and say, you know, how's your day? And they're like, they they're honest or somewhere like it's not the best. Thank you for being honest. I'm glad you could share that. I hope that you have a great day or I could give you that smile, you know, like little things like that, acknowledging the person changing the, you know, something here. You have to acknowledge everyone from the janitor to the this to the that. Video. Everybody needs to be acknowledged, not just the head. Yes, you know, yes, Something yes. I learned years and years and years ago from Jack Canfield is he would teach us um, to ask somebody on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, how is your day going? And mm -hmm. whatever number they came up with, unless of course they said 10, but if they, let's say they said five, he would always say, what would move the number higher? Mm -hmm. Now that gets the person thinking about, you know, huh, well, maybe if this or that. And it's so interesting how we can, I don't know, plant a seed for people to reach another, an expanded layer of uh, an expansion of vibrational energy. I think we, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said that. I remember walking into a beautiful uh, a building with a friend and there was a guy that was keeping the floors so immaculate. They were beautiful. They were shiny. And I just stopped. I said, wow, you're doing a great job. My friend just walked on like it wasn't, you know. But this man was doing it like, you know, nobody. we have to notice each other as human beings. Yes. We yeah. have to acknowledge what we're all contributing together. Um, because that's how we're going to get out of this jam that we're in. Yeah. It's becoming, coming back to human rather than my how much can i get oh i want more i want more i want more you know why because i'm not happy i'm not happy nobody loves me so i want more money okay you know that seems to be where we are Sorry i want that. what you're having and we all have the ability to do this like i love iced tea with a lot of ice and so when I go to a restaurant and the server hears me, because usually when I say I'd like a glass of iced tea and an extra glass of ice. So they'll bring me like this little cup like this with ice. And I'm like, what is this ration ice day? You know, but when a server gets it and they bring me it just exactly what I asked for, you know what? I always, always say, 
thank you for making this a great experience for me. Acknowledging someone, telling, you know, the manager, you know, so many people tell the manager, hey, they did great. They'll come up and like, what did they do? I was like, why did you come up already? Like, I know you get bad stuff, but like, this isn't the energy to come up with someone wanting to talk to you. I'll say, I said, it's actually a great thing. I want to say you have a beautiful employee and you should do some spirit fingers and high kicks for them and acknowledge them. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And you know why? Not only because it's profitable, because it's fun. Let's go have fun. Let's bring the fun. Let's bring the joy. Let's bring the okay. love. A lot of people don't want to love. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, imagine what the eating out experience could be if, um, and of course, maybe fine dining, we don't want to do this, but let's just say, you know, I don't know, urban plates or something, you know, where, um, you know, uh, um, someone compliments a server to the manager and the manager rings a bell and then everyone gets up and does the happy dance, you know, or the chicken dance or something. Then you're like, oh. Somebody was complimented. This is great. Wouldn't it be amazing? This is a great concept for a restaurant. Somebody needs to. Yeah, no, I, I think it totally yeah. is. Like whenever, even when I'm on the phone, I'll talk to someone. I said, please give them a high kick and spirit finger since I can't. I said, I really want you to physically promise me you're going to do that for this employee. And they like, start laughing. They're like, we will, we will. I promise you. But I love it's that. that. What, yeah. Let's what an start excellent it. Think start it. Oh. This has just been so great, and I really want to honor everyone's time about this. So I feel like we could just go on and on and on and on with this. Elena, thank you so much for being here because this has so been fun. such a high vibrational conversation, and I really appreciate you and all of us that showed up here and what all of us are doing individually yes. and together. Yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, um, now you got Sherry you, going with the hearts. You know, yeah. she's just going to be like out of control now. Get your feather pen. Yeah. <laughs> all right, ladies. Thank you. And for all of you watching this on replay, leave some comments. Let us know what you do to get out there and bring joy and happiness to others and how you raise your vibrational energy. In the meantime, ciao for now. Bye.